welcome to the one box segment and you know the one box segment what we actually do is bring an amazing personality your way to talk about their talent life how it has been able to help themselves and the people around them and also we actually bring up topical issues sometimes to discuss in a way that helps you mold your talent life and build you into a better person I am Luke Manatee Lacking, aka the Generalismo. And right about now, I have a guest in the studio with me who actually is nicknamed Ninjas Nikki. So, on today's episode, the topic for discussion is multi talent, managing your talent and skills. A lot of people are actually multi talented, while some people have just one talent. And the thing is that, from my own understanding, I think everybody is multi talented. Everybody has basically more than one talent, but it just depends on our strength in identifying those talents and skills in us. They might just be there lying down and you not identify them yet. So in identifying them, Joy Luja is here with me to discuss on how you can help yourself manage those talents or the numerous talents you have. Welcome to the program, Joy. Thank you. Good afternoon. I feel honored having this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Now getting to the business of today, Joy. The question is, a lot of people are actually more talented, if I may ask. Is that true? Yes. So being a most talented person, how do you have yourself manage your numerous talents? Actually, there's a difference between talent and skills. Like you said, most skills are most talented. But a lot of people don't know this difference between talent and skills. Talent is a gift. She okay. yet. But to me, I don't like using the word gift. Yes. Rather, I use the word ability or aptitude to do things you find yourself doing and find pleasure or derive pleasure in doing them. And sometimes you're born with it. But the ability for you to grow up and discover it in you brings out the talent in you. Now, thank you. That very statement you just made actually brings me to the question. Talented people, are they born or made? Actually, to me, I see talented people as being born and made. First of all, being born. Some people are born with something, sometimes hereditary. For example, I'm a kid, I'm growing up, and I'm like two years old already. You know, I don't know the difference between right and wrong. I don't know what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. I just find myself singing. I keep singing all day. I sing well. Like, people are like, wow, you have a nice voice. She understand. And I was like, yes. People were like, ah, this is a good talent. She's talented. Actually, she was being born with it. Sometimes you can inherit it from your family. Maybe your mother, your ancestors, your grandmom. Because they were into it before you became or before you came into existence and you just grow up and you find yourself doing it, that's when you're being born with it. So but in mean, most cases, they have been made because a lot of people have so many talents and they don't know they have. They, ha they, need, they need so many people to help them figure out their talents. Talent. So one thing about life is interest. Once you have interest and, and passion for what you're doing, you find progress in whatever you're doing. When you put your interest in repairing computers and all those things, and that automatically makes you a computer engineer, and you find out that, okay, I want to do this thing, I like doing this thing. When I start doing this thing, yes, I think I'm getting, I like, it yes, it's working out for me and I'm doing this thing. Then along the line, you put your interest, all focus in it. You become a computer engineer in future. That means you're skillful in that. Yes, you're skilled. And it's can, the skill can so be bestowed in you that it will make a talent out of it for so you. So that's converting your skill into a talent. Yes. Now, let me, let, me, let me get it clearly. So talent is what we actually born with or what we have passion for. Right? Yes, that's yes. Ability to do something or but, aptitude to do things but the naturally. Skill, the skill now is it's being learned and time. acquired. Yes, your desire yes, that yes. Now let's get it right. I actually have a statement that I do make every time on this program that you have to make your passion your profession because yes. that's the only way you make yes. your vision a reality. Yes. Now, a lot of people actually ask me, what's the meaning of that? My point is that whatever you don't have passion for, you cannot realize. And that vision is just a mirage. So now, maybe you let me ask her the question of how well does passion help in building our vision, making it a realization for us? Okay. Actually, first of all, I want to define passion. Okay. Passion is the ability or a process whereby you see yourself over liking something that you have, you almost have no control for. For example, it's loving. Like an addiction. Yes, most times it turns into addiction. For example, loving someone. You can love someone that you overlook the errors of your lovers because you have passion for him. For you to have that passion to realize your vision, you have to fall in love with whatever you do. 
you have to be in love with whatever you do. Once you don't love what you do, you can't realize, you can't realize anything good out of it. Now, let me ask you one. Even if we love what we do so sweetly that we can't control our love for it, can you actually do what you're doing right now as a job, even if you're not paid for it? Yes. That's why it's called passion. They say one man's food is another man's poison. Mm. So what I like, you may not like. And yes. what you like, I might not like. Mm. So that's why some people actually prefer being skilled and why other people prefer being talented. But for me, I think I'll go with it too. Like someone once said that if you're placed with choices, then choose both. <laughs> so I'm just choosing both. I'm talented and I'm skillful. So this is being skillful right now. Talking about passion, having passion for what you do and how your passion helps you realize your vision. We were discussing that before we went with Vice from the streets. So, Nikki, talking about the passion for do you have me just round about the very question? Okay, like I would say, I have a friend, his name is Escafino. He, he used to say one word, and whenever he says that, I just laugh over it, but it gets to me. He says, passion is the drive in attaining your vision or your goals in life. Right. So, I, I just think for you to attain any goal in life, or for you to attain anything you do, you have to have a passion for it. So now, let me, let's, get, let's get higher. Looking at being multi-talented and being multi-skilled, a lot of people actually have problems identifying their multiple talents and their multiple skills. It's not that they don't have it, it's just how to identify them and how to manage their skills. So you find out that someone is a barber and at the same time is a mechanic. If they bar one side, weekend, they bar. Midweek, they go do engineering work. But then, if they find her, they, they find her hard to manage that time between doing barbing or been doing engineering work. Or maybe now the engineering work, they bring money past. They just the job, money. The <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah, understand? So now managing the boat is now a problem. So what are the tips you can actually give to help in managing our talent and our skills? Okay, actually, I would say first of all, you have to have. I keep saying this. You have to love what you do. It's not a crime to be multiple talented or multiple skilled because a lot of people do so many things at once. As a matter of fact, it's very, very dangerous to have just one talent Seriously. or one skill. Yes. Especially because, in Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> for, example, for example, we're, 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 um, okay, we're in this era where you wear pencil trousers, yeah? And you only know how to make pencil trousers and you can't make baggy. A time will come when that pencil trouser goes out of fashion. How will you cope? How will you eat? For example, you're a beater. You learn how to beat clothes, like make beads, sequins, yeah. and all those things. It comes, like fashion is something that comes in and goes mm -hmm. out. She understand? It's not something you do every day. So when the, when the, when the beading um, fashion comes in trending, you're all above everywhere. You're making beads, you're sequencing dresses for people. But what about when the time comes that that doesn't matter anymore? It's something, it's something else. Mean. Maybe padding, stitches, doing something. You fall back. You have nothing to do. Then you realize that you have to start all over oh, again. Gosh. Either to now realize a new talent or go in for a new skill. So as a matter of fact, being multiple talented helps a lot. But now you have to choose what you want to do. Like people do say, jack of all trade. Master of none. Not be so be for Nigeria. <laughs> oh. If they ask me, be jack of all trade and master of none because you will see food they chop every day. Then you be master of one, and when that one come up for trend, nothing they come for you. Don't so you actually speak to minds, and I'm sure a lot of people actually out there have heard you, and they understand well that to manage your talent and their skills very well, there are a lot of things that could help. One of them she said is passion. Another one she said is mm -hmm. being bold being outspoken and being truthful to yourself well nikki maybe we could give us some other like maybe two okay or one. ability to relate to others to relate to others yes okay. that's the third one like you have to relate to others you have to make people see things from your point of view not by over argument no because some people already they argue they argue honestly without point talk, no, it, thank you so you have to make people see things from your point of view and you always have to see things from people's point of view because like you said earlier on we humans see things from different, different perspectives. perspectives so you have to always make sure you come to a right state then you have to be you have to have good communication skills that's the fourth one you have to learn how to communicate you have to be polite when... Because you're going to be communicating with a lot of people. Yes. Actually. You have to be polite when politeness is necessary. 
You have to be bold when boldness is necessary. You have to be calm when it requires it. This, this is, these are some accolades for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I must appreciate say, it's that. It's been a pleasure having you on the program. And Thank you very man, much. It's been an honor. I must say, I learned a lot from this very one. So, out there, you are what you're doing. You're not a lazy youth. I say you deserve some accolades. Yes, you, you know, really sure this, do this, deserve this, some this, accolades. This, this, this one, thumbs up, is coming from me. So, you have some accolades out there. So, right now, let's move to the Witty Plus segment on the program, Shine.